Caroline's yawning again. <laughs> There's something about when you hit record and it does the little three, two, one. If I'm sleepy, I do be yawning. Like three, two, one, take a nap. <laughs> well, it is once again 10 p.m. and we're just now recording. Well, yeah. that's not true. Well, we recorded for the past two hours for TBR Tuesday because we have never been concise in our lives. No. And we so read now so much. Now it's 10 p.m. Again, why does the, we got? There's no solution. We're gonna no. keep doing this. I would no. say we'd get better, but we won't. We won't. There's no way. I know us. <laughs> we're gonna continue to record at 10 p.m. and we're gonna continue well, to be like, yeah, I would say we can probably do an hour long <laughs> episode and then record two hours. Because, <laughs> like I tell you, like I mourn my weekends. Like Sundays are just like mourning um, the fact that Monday is coming. But then, like I also know that on Monday night I'll be tired, so I'm like. Sunday let's just get it out of the way um and so in we're theory doing we that. could record during the day but I have never yeah. done anything that I've set out to do during the day no. it always happens at night well because then like my parents like want to watch a movie or like do things and then like there's just like a lot of moving parts so it's just easier at night um I tend to get like particularly because the nice the nice the day was really nice so mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I would, what a good day to record TikToks like there, there's yeah. sun finally the light yeah um, but as soon as I started recording, my dad started mowing, the which lawn is mower. very loud. And I was like, mm, yep. Okay. So we technically don't have a lawn to mow because it's all snow. But mm-hmm. when it's the summer, we live in a cul-de-sac. And I swear to God, they're on a schedule. <laughs> Every day, another neighbor is mowing their lawn. And I'm like, stop. Like, you'll go outside to like, you'll have like a nice drink and like a book. <laughs> Like, as soon as you get out there, I'm like, this is really rude, and it feels personal. And then there are kids who are just, like, little hellions, and I'm like, I don't like you. So we live on five acres, so, like, Mm -hmm. if I go sit on the back porch, unless my dad is doing something, it's usually – I mean, sometimes if one of the nearby neighbors is doing something, it is loud, but it's not Mm -hmm. usually too awful. Today was – like 70 in the 70s oh, um so but nice. it was like overcast and windy so it was like a little bit chilly for part of the day so i went out mm-hmm. and sat and i drank my little matcha latte and i made my little canva designs mm-hmm. um and i listened to audiobooks and things and that was so nice and then all of a sudden the sun came out and the wind went away so it got hot and then my dad started mowing the lawn <laughs> so my cat freaked out instead of sitting with me because the mo- the lawn mower was chasing him around yeah. the house and i was like <laughs> Oh, fine. I mean, my earbuds are noise canceling, so I could stay out there for part. They of are it crazy noise canceling. I use crazy my. Noise canceling. I don't like the pros as much because they don't stay in my ears as well. Um, so I'll use my the smaller ones um, normally. But just recently, I was in the bathtub and I took my uh, pros because they're waterproof. And I had just like I discovered because I listened to Spotify, but I like went on Apple Music. And I, like, discovered that, like, Dolby Atmos thing and then also, like, the different, like, settings the AirPod Pros can do. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm in a world of pure imagination. Because it, like, drowned out, like, the water rushing. And I was like, whoa. I Mine was – I got them because I'm late to everything that requires spending money. So I didn't get Spotify yeah. until I – or Spotify, like, premium until mm-hmm. I was in college. Same. Um because I just would shuffle my music. And now yeah. I'm like, oh my god, what was I doing? Um, but f- similarly, I had corded headphones up until like probably mm. last year. Um, mm-hmm. Or like earbuds, rather. AirPods just, changed my life. So they changed my life just generally being Bluetooth. But specifically, I got them right before... I took some trip. And on the mm. plane... Ooh. You pop the little noise canceling thing on, and all of that, like, <laughs> of being mm-hmm. on a plane that you don't notice when you get on because it's just the atmosphere. Yeah. But as soon as you put noise canceling headphones and it it's vanishes, crazy. you're like, oh, it's crazy. Silence. It was magical, and now I can't go anywhere without them. Same. My pro tip for listening to audiobooks is get a pair of wireless headphones because as mm-hmm. soon as I did that, the the game was changed. Um, listen to it anywhere mm -hmm. it comes with the side effect of your parents not knowing that you're listening to an audiobook because you've got like one ear in and for me i have long hair and so they just normally can't see that i have a headphone in so we were watching or my mom was watching emily in paris one night and she thought i was watching with her i was sitting there listening to my audiobook and apparently i thought she knew because i made like a show of like putting my airpod in um, but she was, like, talking to me throughout the whole thing about, like, things happening to Emily. And I was like, yeah, wow, crazy. Can't believe it. She thinks I watched that entire show. I didn't. 
I wasn't. I didn't. I was like, and I got to a point where I was like, she does she think I'm like watching this? And then I just kind of like went along with it. But yeah, I was listening to an audiobook. So sorry, mom. Um, My downside is that um, so I listen to audiobooks on walks. My hot mm-hmm. girl walks. Mm-hmm. Um, unless I'm like really feeling a podcast, which I'm not ironically not a super big podcast person so i've started listening to audiobooks on my hot girl walks and they have the added benefit of like i want to keep listening so it makes me walk more Mm -hmm. um but i've also started on the occasions that i go to the gym um which i only ever go to for cardio because Mm -hmm. i I do pilates and stuff at home i don't i need somebody to tell me what to do is the problem yeah like a person on the internet gives me a workout and i don't want to be like watching someone on my phone and trying to lift weights in a gym where there are other people who are like doing their own workout. that's just too much for me um and i'm not gonna go do pilates or something there so i really only go to the gym for the elliptical and the stationary Mm -hmm. bikes um which means i don't have to think because I'm just doing the elliptical, so I will pop mm-hmm. on an audiobook. The problem with that is that I listen to romance novels. Yeah. So I was listening to um, the Kennedy Ryan Audible original, Coming Home, mm-hmm. and it was like the last – I was like, I'm going to walk on this elliptical machine until I have finished this audiobook. So it was only like 40 minutes or something left in mine mm-hmm. um, or whatever it was I had gotten at the sex scene. And I was like, wow, yeah, I live in fear of my AirPods disconnecting right now. And just, like... Just blasting. Just, like, a sex scene blasting in the mm-hmm. middle of a gym. Which, like, it's loud enough in the gym that probably nobody would even hear it. But... Uh, yeah. I've played fast and loose uh, with that same rule. But it's at the mm-hmm. grocery store. Um, mm. The most memorable time for me was listening to Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare for the first time. Um, and... Good golly. Um, there's a scene. Miss Molly. Miss Molly, Jesus. There's a scene where um, she doesn't think she's worthy of him because she is a little lower class. And so he bends her over a desk and every thrust lists his title, like every like courtesy title. And it's one of the hottest things I've ever read because he's like, I'm this, 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 this but I'm yours. And it, I was in like the cheese aisle. So one of the <laughs> most unsexy aisles. <laughs> Why are you implying that cheese isn't sexy? I would argue that the cheese aisle might be the sexiest aisle. I just don't know if dairy is that uh, sexy, but it's I guess. cheese. I'm close to, to Wisconsin. Bread. So that is true. Bread and cheese together is a sexy combination. Yeah, but fancy cheese it was like cub foods it was not fancy cheese it was like craft oh well, i was not in the deli <laughs> see i'm thinking of like h-e-b where we have the fancy mm. cheese section and that is the yeah. sexiest section yeah no um wait if the cheese aisle is what do you think the sexiest aisle of the grocery store is uh, i mean i love a good donut that's so not like its own aisle. The bakery. The bakery is like a section. The aisle. Uh, I mean, I guess the the fancy cheese section isn't really an aisle in mine either. It's a yeah. I don't know. I maybe like, do you have like a wine? We've got a section for wine. Maybe you could argue that's the um section. in Minnesota. You don't in Wisconsin. You can sell wine and stuff on the shelves. I think our cub has like. Uh, canned stuff that you can buy and they have like an attack the one downtown has like yeah so like you can go to wisconsin and you can like when we were at our cabin you can like buy wine on the shelf like i went to like when i lived in portland i could like buy wine at target um but that isn't a thing here um and it was only recently where you could start buying alcohol on sundays you used to not be able oh to i think that. we still oh no we can't in grocery stores liquor stores are closed on sundays, i think they i think they find them on Re- like within like the last like five years or so i think they changed that to where you can go to a liquor store on sunday um but yeah grocery stores mostly don't unless it's like an attached like a target up in the cities has like an attached liquor store but like my target down here there's no alcohol well this is a fascinating revelation <laughs> for me my target has so much wine i wish i loved it because you get the five percent target card discount when i was in portland it was heaven oh well this is a fascinating <laughs> So the wine aisle at a Target would be pretty sexy because Target in itself, I just – Target gets me hot. So, like – Target's pretty sexy. Yeah. Bullseye. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, 
This was Oof. a weird tangent. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen to a very sexy scene in the cheese aisle. I- sure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Romancer TBR. We've, I think, successfully bantered our way into this, even though we didn't quite get to the point of the episode. No. No, we didn't. Which is unrelated to everything we've talked about so far. Except that I did listen to it as an audiobook. I said quite literally everything. Uh, I did actually, I was in the grocery store yesterday, and I was listening to this, but I only got like 15% in, and then Mm -hmm. I just decided to read the ebook because it was faster, because I wanted to refresh before the episode. I listen to a lot of this one while going on hot girl walks. Nice. This would be a good walk so. one. And we haven't, again, said the freaking title. It's One Duke Down by Anna Bennett. The one and only. Oh, God. I love it. I push this one on everyone. Because I think, like, I don't think anyone would really hate it. I think they could be, like, indifferent towards it. But I don't think it would be one that would cause, like, intense, like, anger. Um, book one, it caused me intense anger. So if you're wondering, can this be read as a standalone? Yes, because Caroline did. Um, yes. And none of the, like, the characters from book one are in this one, um, but there wasn't, there's no real read. There's yeah, no real it wasn't like, wait, that. who is this? Yeah. What happened here? Yeah. It, it just was clearly like, ah, oh, a couple that must have gotten together the last book. Mm-hmm. So do what you want in reading series in order or just skipping ahead because yep. it makes you know, save you some pain. Um, but that's another lesson of don't always write an author off if you don't enjoy one of their books. Sometimes I will never read an author again. And then sometimes, um, like the cover, this cover got me. There was no way I was not going to read this book because the cover is just orange and beautiful and they're smiling. Um, but yeah, I am happy that I got over that bridge. I have like a two book rule i'll sometimes Mm. not follow that if there's like other Mm -hmm. books that i really want to read or something typically if it's an author that i don't really know i will give them two books where if i don't like one i'm like this might just be because i didn't like this particular book if i don't like two yeah you're gonna have to convince me to read a third book yeah and like Um, book one it was the plot it wasn't the writing and it wasn't the mm -hmm. audiobook because it beverly beverly a craig is one of my favorite narrators and she narrates both of these i think that's so funny i really don't like her oh i love her that's so she does this like i could see where you were that's what chris justine air does to me though i feel that see justine air i don't even remember what she sounds like because i feel like she's just a narrator Mm -hmm. this one i know she does something very specific with hero, like men, specifically with mm-hmm. heroes that I don't love. And there's something even more particular that she does with heroines. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but she I, does something with her voice. I know what you mean, though. Like, I know it, but yeah. I like it. But I could understand where she would be. No, it grates very on iffy. me. Mm-hmm. She makes the, I think, interestingly, she does to heroines what you think Rosalind Landor does to heroes (laughs) where I listen and I'm like why are you making the heroine sound like an elderly woman oh see yeah I don't get that for because she narrates a lot of I think Lenora Bell maybe like Um, not quite nasally it's she's like she's got like a nasally a little bit but there's like something I don't know what it is yeah but when you listen you'll know what I mean Mm-hmm. That, like, very it didn't voice. bother me enough to not listen to it and also mm-hmm. she narrates all of the um Kate Bateman um that yeah whatchamacallit series that I'm listening to yeah um so like again it's not like enough to put me mm-hmm. off the audiobooks I know um, some people don't and I like, like her wealth accent for the heroes like but like mm-hmm. like I listen to it I actually I wonder if I might have enjoyed this book more if I had I'm, I'm I, just thinking- I enjoyed this one just fine I wonder if I might have liked it better if I'd read it I challenge you if you ever need a comfort reread because this is my third time reading this book <laughs> and I had an even better time than the two previous oh, yeah. times. Um, I think this would be a really fun one to reread. Just I am. Um, if I like think book three comes out, well, it will. But my thing, I keep like complaining about it. I feel like I should say I I did enjoy this book. Mm-hmm. I gave it like four stars. You it's suggested one of the ones this that, episode, so it's not like yeah. I um, wasn't like yeah. ugh. We have to talk yeah. about this. Um, I do think it's we talked about this in the TBR Tuesday episode mm-hmm. um, that we just recorded. Where from? If you're listening to this earlier this week, um, where you were saying like it's harder both to displease me Mm -hmm. in books and to like get me into that five star Mm -hmm. range than it is for you i am i tend to live in the middle ground more i do think if you would have read this one as the arc um well so it's interesting that you say that though because i was thinking about that as i was listening to it 
And the thing yeah. that I noticed was, like, I've read um, a novella from Anna Bennett that was part of a mm. Christmas anthology. I don't remember a ton about it. It was fine. But mm-hmm. the thing that I noticed with this one is that sometimes if dialogue is a little bit wonky or, like, mm. I don't quite like the dialogue, an audiobook helps with that. Oh, interesting. Because someone performing it makes it mm-hmm. sound more natural. Yes. And so I was like, on the one hand, I don't love this narrator. At least this one was worse than other books I've heard Beverly mm-hmm. A. Craig do. I think because Poppy's lower class, um, and so she she does a different accent. It flows better because it's an audiobook, so someone performing it makes it sound more natural. But mm-hmm. when I stopped to really pay attention, some of the dialogue didn't work for me. Mm. I don't know how to explain that any better, other than it just didn't no, quite I get feel it. natural. I get it in just like a personal sense, because like the same thing with uh, Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. Um, it wasn't the dialogue, but it was, like, the writing that, like, it took me a while to, like, get used to it. Um, So, again, maybe in an audiobook that would, you know, iron out. Mm-hmm. But I did enjoy this one. But but this is one of the ones that's, like, very low. Like, there is an, yes. a, a kind of dramatic external plot, but it's, like, honestly not a big deal. Yeah. Which is odd because somebody tries to murder him at the beginning but it was of this also, book. But, like, it's not a big deal. It was also a very fun – I liked the pacing of that part because, like, they found out – who did it at like 70% or like 60 or 70%. Yeah, I didn't realize how early they would find out. Yeah. So I thought that was the end. And I was like, man, we are really dragging out this like post third act. Yeah. <laughs> but then like, there wasn't. was still like 30% left. And then like there's even more things that happen Drama. before they get, you know, married. It's hard um, for me to like really love a book that isn't at least a little angsty though i think is my thing yeah versus see, that really really works for works you. for me because like it's just so cute like my my favorite part about the book is that like you said she's lower class and he's a duke um and in theory they're worlds apart um but it never truly got in their way they always had a mature conversation and like moved past it um at the mm-hmm. beginning she was like very reserved and like did not want to um get attached to him because she had a bad um experience with her mother's family who were of the aristocracy and she just didn't trust people in power and stuff um and he didn't look at it as um i'm we're too different so i'm not gonna try he looked at it as we're very different so i'm gonna try to understand you and understand where you're coming from and mm-hmm. that is a huge part of why I love A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare because there's a scene um, in that book where Colin admits that he's not good enough for Minerva, but he doesn't run away from it. He actively betters himself and makes himself a better person to where mm-hmm. he feels that she deserves him at that moment. And I think that happens to an extent here in a little bit different of a form. She thinks he'll never understand her heart um, and like what – you know, her family means to her and everything. And then he um, doesn't make her choose her family over him. He gives her a happy medium. And, like, he – there's things with her brother. Um, and he doesn't ever hold any of it against her. Like, there's one point where she thinks he's going to, like, break up with her because um, her brother fucked up. And he's like, mm-hmm. I I know how much he means to you. Like, I, I understand. And she's like, whoa. Like, this you is know, the moment. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. – the love of your life's brother tries to murder you and you just got to work around that. You work around it. And sometimes you realize like, was it like 60%, like 50 or 60% through the book that, you know, he did try to murder you. Cause he had like had amnesia. He didn't know. Um, he had like partial amnesia. So he knew who he was. She didn't believe he was a Duke at first. Cause he washes up on her beach. Mm-hmm. She's a fisher woman. Um, and so she was like fishing and he was caught in her net and he like wakes up and, he's like i'm a duke and she's like well that's a funny thing for you to say who are you and he's like no i'm literally a duke um but he doesn't remember who tried to kill he remembers he was like like murder was attempted but he doesn't know who did it um and so that's the whole thing he has to like stay in her cot like little hut thing on the beach um and pretend to be dead while his uh valet um and her like parse out who uh tried to kill him and then they go on like different scouting missions yeah a little to, like adventures. see if yeah to like see if his enemies like his enemies which one did this um 
and you find out that the brother was hired to uh, take this guy out. And then he realizes that and he's like, I'm just not going to say anything to Poppy because I don't want to lose her. <laughs> and like, I know that she would feel bad. So I'm just going to not. And then she finds out and she's like, oh, my God, he's going to be so angry. I would understand if he like never wanted to see me again. And he's like, I knew it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> like, I think you I think we could be friends if like we went and got a beer. So <laughs> it, it just like I have so many quotes that I just like marked down of just moments where they could have broken up or moments where um, they could have made rash decisions or not listened to each other, but they always had a conversation um, and they always talked about it. And so it just felt like a very mature relationship while still being like fun and like soft. I don't, it's just, it's hard really for me to describe but that's like everything that I love about like a low angst book is when they just talk to each other and do cute things <laughs> and love each other <laughs> like it's insta love um they're like strange it's like strangers it's not insta, insta, so. it's like insta it's attraction like, I guess yeah um, but they don't act on it for a very no. long time no so like um they're strangers and then they're like friends and then lovers, I guess. And then there's obviously mutual attraction. Um, they're like almost kiss one time and then there's like an only one bed at an inn, sexy bathtub times. Um, and then there's sex on the beach and in hut <laughs> on beach. Um, and like there's like a quote where she's like um, – just happy that he never gave up because again like she was very reserved for a lot of it because she was scared to give him her heart and he was just like okay that's fine like take as much time as you need i'll always be here um and again there was a moment after the villain was revealed that they could have like broken up and i think in a lot of different books if it would have been like the true like third act situation like right before the end of the book um that could have happened but they got over it um and then they were going to get married and then he was kidnapped. <laughs> baby Lisa Kleypas style. Little baby. It was. I was like, oh, kidnapping. <laughs> yep. Didn't see that one coming. Because nope. I had guessed I had guessed yeah. the murderer. Yeah, me too. Or attempted murderer. Yeah. Pretty much as soon as he was introduced. I didn't guess the brother's involvement. Um, We're spoiling this. So uh, obviously there oh, are spoilers yeah. in this episode. It's his cousin. Um, Dun, dun, dun. I figured out the brother as soon as he was like, "Oh, he tried to kill me." I was like, "Okay, so he's been hired by someone." Yeah, I just I didn't anticipate the brother being hired to kill no. him until he saw until him. Until that then, was revealed. Yeah. And well, then as soon as cuz we don't really know about the cousin, that was kind mm-hmm. of like a what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It like shows up at the end where I was like, "Oh, we we haven't met the murderer." Like yeah. or attempted well, cause, murderer like, rather. Cuz he like talked about his cousin how he was like super close and like who he missed cuz at one point she like asked him the question like who do you miss oh, i didn't even really remember that yeah so like he like um she asked him um who he missed most and then she thought he was like engaged or something and he's like no it's my cousin right. we grew up together i love well, that's him. a bummer i forgot about that conversation yeah so like they like grew up together um he was obviously the heir and the cousin was the next like the spare I guess. Well, that would be his father. Well, he was like third in line. Yeah. Yeah, So he wasn't, he was always resentful of the hero, but the hero, he never clocked it. Um, He never really understood the animosity. Um, So like, I think if it was executed differently, I wouldn't have liked it, but I think like he tried to- I mean, it's fine because I just didn't care. (laughs) Yeah. Like he tried to show like mercy at the first time because he was like, I'm not going to sentence you to hang. I'll just ship you off to the army. I will say this, freaking, I will say this, because I was like, okay, he sends him off to the army, and the cousin's being annoying, and like, begging not to go, whatever, and he's like, how long do I have to stay away, and they said 10 years, and he's like, at least buy me a commission, like, begging him for mercy, whatever, and Keen looked that man in the eyes and said, see you in a decade, and then walked out, and I, yeah, I know, I was like, doing my little hot girl walk, and I was like, damn, she like, clicks her ankle, see you in a decade, and like, but I respect the hell out of that. Yeah. That's such a badass exit line. 
Exactly, because like there are there are heroes that I've read who would be like, oh, it wasn't that bad, or like they wouldn't take it seriously. But he took it pretty damn seriously. But he's still kind. There was still a little bit like he's still my cousin. I don't want him to die, but I want him to be a better person. Um, but then he kidnaps. Well, he sends someone to kidnap him, and he's just over it. He's like, go to fucking America, and then he ships him off to America. And the uncle's like, take him. He was an embarrassment. This was embarrassing. I'm sorry. <laughs> this was embarrassing. Oh, when your son tries to kill your nephew and then kidnaps him. God, that's the worst. The worst. I hate it when that well, happens. Because then it was dramatic because it was their engagement ball and everyone – so everyone knew that Poppy was obviously of the lower class. And so it was like a scandal that they were um, getting married, which again, like the way that she just like agreed and like – it just was different. Like every – part where they could break up or where I've read a breakup in another book for like various different reasons. They just stayed together. Um, But like, she never really suspected that he was like running away. She was like, what's wrong with them? Like, this isn't um, like, it's like the end of a tempt me at twilight. She didn't think that he uh, Rutledge Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. ran off. She was like, something is wrong. Um, And then obviously he walks in all hot and ripped up. And he's like, sure. let's get married. <laughs> well, it was the engagement ball. But um, then they were like, it's a love match. The countess who had all the power was like, that's fine in the eyes of the ton now because they're in love. Um, I, I love just. Day, like, smoking. <laughs> <laughs> well, because like they'd already like made peace with their social differences. And like they were going to like split their time living um by the sea and then in london and like they both made concessions it wasn't like an all or nothing she could still fish if she wanted to um but she didn't have to like now take care of her father work do all this thing the father had a little bit of a romance at the end um Mm -hmm. kitty is gonna be i believe the book the book three i assume she was in book one um she was like an unruly uh so there's like a school for girls on this wherever island i don't know well Bellhaven bay yeah um and so they had like she's the ward or something of the hero of book one Hmm. um so blade it was like bladenton and hazel i think they were the the pair in book one um so kitty is around um and she's like drawing up architectural designs to like upgrade the father's um cottage and then also Mm -hmm. they're building a house on the sea um so i wonder if it's gonna be like an architectural book she's got an, an a nemesis She's like, my nemesis is following me. And I was like, Oh, yeah, she did throw that out. I was like, Kitty, what? I was like, I can't wait. Um, So I'm very excited. Um, Yeah. That'll make three enemies to lovers architectural historical romances for us. Architectural pining. by design. I mean, they're not like really enemies, but they're kind of enemies. Second chance kind of enemies, you know? Yeah. And then a daring pursuit. Once again, not really enemies, but yeah. a daring pursuit. They're like kind of enemies. Mm. Um, Kitty's book, I think, is gonna be fun, and I hope it has something to do with like architecture and like he's some burly man. Lenora Bell has um an architectural book. He's renovating her brother's house. Um, it's a Beauty and the Beast one. Mm-hmm. Um, loves a rogue, I think. Um, and he's just really big and like really annoying her because she's like living at her brother's estate um and she's like very bookish and um yeah that's a good one and then they break some architecture in the bedroom why did you i don't know um this turned into an architecture tangent um (laughs) But yeah, I I mean, thus far, no one has topped. <laughs> well, on the romantic <laughs> side of things, Tristan painting mm. the like mistress's bedroom, not mistresses and mistress, but like mistress the mistress of the house. Of the house. Yeah. A uh, bedroom in his house, the same color that he knows Karis's bedroom is because mm. it's her favorite color. Mm hmm. While definitely being in denial about the fact that yeah. he painted that room for her. On the sexy side of things, nothing will top. Uh, oh my god, Grantham 
Yeah. Fucking Maggie on an architectural drafting desk. Because I've used those drafting desks. De- desks. I know. I I did some set design back in the day. I know what those desks are like. What are Does they it seem like? comfortable? No. They like raise. Oh, they're so at like an the, angle. So they can, yeah. they're so adjustable. Seen, okay, so that's. And like, it doesn't seem comfortable, but wow, is it hot to read about. And I mean, in Lenora Bell's. I just loved – it's kind of like an overboard where he's, like, the sweaty um, – Keith – no, Keith, oh, my God. What's his name? You really do like overboard. I love it. Goldie Hawn and uh, Kurt Russell, that's the name. Um, he's, like, the sweaty, like, architect. And then, obviously, there's no amnesia in this or anything. But, like, he's just, like, picking all of um, – or, like, pressing all of her buttons. Um, and then they <laughs> – she inherits a body bookshop. Um and it's like there's like a bunch of different erotica there and it's like two old um cogsworth because it's like the beauty and the beast so the two um you know candlestick and clock yes Lum- um, lumiere and cogsworth yep and then like the the tea mug lady she's there this is pots yeah um i am begging you <laughs> I'm bad with names. To rewatch Beauty and the Beast. I love I Beauty and the Beast, but I'm bad with names. I picked them yeah, up. Yeah, but in the book, their though. names are Lumiere, <laughs> as in French. light. He's a candlestick. Cogsworth, as in the cogs yeah, of the clock. And Mrs. Zombie. Potts. Yeah. The teapot. I, I could say that that one's on me. I know Chip. I don't think Chip was in the book, though. Because okay. He's a child. But, um,. Again, we've we've now got nickels to rub together, so we could do a whole episode. <laughs> nickels to rub together. Um, and I think there's like a little bit of there's there's architecture in a wicked game. Yeah, there okay. is. Yeah, there is. Interesting. Uh, so have fun with that, because that that was a good third act or like grand gesture. I think you'll mm. appreciate it. It won't be one that oh. will um give you the heat. Take me out. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> we JBs. It'll be it'll be good. Um, okay, good. Back to back to this one. Yes. Um. D- 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 there's a baby log, or there was not really an epilogue in this book. It's just a chapter. Um. But at the end, she's like, "How would you feel about changing some nappies?" And he's like, "What?" She's like, seven <laughs> months." <laughs> no, actually, what he said was, "I don't know. I've never really thought about it." Wait a second. <laughs> Which I did kind of cute. I do respect she was, that. Oh God! She's I just, like, I don't know. And he just waits. I mean, this man was just so in love with her. Um, and it just seemed like a very healthy kind of love, which, again, like, we had just read, or I had just read, you were currently reading um, Eva Lay's um, A Rogue's mm. Rules for Seduction, which is angsty and beautiful. Yes, Eve, that's a book. And, that, and again, like, I can love that book. But again, that book did things differently than I thought than it could have done. That's true. And it, it, and it worked so fucking well because it did. It did um because i was scared for a little bit there um so like i can enjoy like a good angsty time um but then again this one just does it for me yeah i mean that's my pitch i think if you want like a warm hug this one to me is like olaf can go fuck himself this is the warmest hug i've ever received so Bye, little snowman. The mental image of you, like, hunting Olaf's head off his body just occurred to me. <laughs> I would do it. I'm not a huge Frozen person, so I would. Oh, I am. Punt, I'd punt that I little that snowman. I think I saw Frozen I in movie theaters, like, four times. Four or five. Mm. I was mm-hmm, a big. Mm-hmm. We were gotcha. excited. I had, like, friends that we were all very excited when it came out. and Gotcha. But. Getting from this Disney tangent to another Disney thingy for this book, there was like a whole Mufasa scar. Um, brother, it was. um, cousin, I, burning. I was like, Dang, we're really like <laughs> fully going line. So Keen was like hanging out of a window, and his hands were like he just saved his cousin from like falling off like this. This like was it like a roof? So maybe not um, a window. like scaffolding, uh, scaffolding out of a window architecture. Um. Well, so like really I, scaffold architect construction it's really I just don't construction know. but go okay, off well we're going together 
I guess because like, I suppose construction would be more lo- the loves of Rogue Ben Lerner Bell. But um, so he's hanging off this building and the cousin's just going full villain mode. So he just takes a candle. He's like, I'm going to burn your hands off and you're going to fall and then you'll die and then I'll get to be the the Duke. Um, but it, was Lion King it just it, it really gave me uh, Mufasa's scar. But then obviously uh, Poppy's brother uh, pulls him back and then he beats him up. So that worked for me. And then Poppy's like, yay, you're back. And his hands have to get bandaged because he literally <laughs> was like burning his hands off. So there was a little bit of Lion King in it. There was. Um, it's just, it's so hard because like I have so many things that I just like love about this book. But like, you'll get it or you, or you won't. Or like, you know, like you'll really get it or like you'll, like again, like I don't know if you could really hate this book, but like. Like, for you, like, yeah, you just I don't didn't know hate it was hard. I don't know what would be. But sometimes, like, softer books are better, like, in the ebook or, like, when I'm paying full attention. Because, like, the audiobook, some of those nuances can get, like, missed. Um, and even for you, if you didn't like the, the narrator. Um, but even for you, if the if the, if the the dialogue is off. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, it's got to be yeah. one or the other. Um, and it was good. It was cute. They were hanging out on a beach. They were. I just love, like, a good, um, like, valet or, like, meddling. Or, like, this guy, he wasn't really meddling. He was just a good friend <laughs> of the hero. Just, uh, um, what digs. a guy. Digs. What, what a guy. Um, the the mutual bathing scene was pretty good for me. Or, like, the, not mutual, but, like, she mm, bathed him and he mutual. bathed her. Mutual, I guess, yeah. Um, I enjoyed that. I really did. And that they they were blindfolded or like he was blindfolded and then they like cut off her being blindfolded. Um mm-hmm. but yeah. I was like, what are we? Yes. <laughs> you, you're a pulling books. a me. <laughs> <laughs> I so feel so seen. Happen? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um so yeah, my recommendation is if you want just a warm hug, you don't like there's a little bit of drama, but it's not like keeping the characters apart um no there's a lot of external someone tried to murder the hero yes and that's why he's on the beach <laughs> there's a mufasa moment <laughs> there's a mufasa moment there's a mufasa moment and then there's a oh you thought we were done and mm-hmm. i was like damn why are we dragging out the end of this book can we be done already oh no it oh he's been kidnapped <laughs> oh. that's why we're not done <laughs> We didn't actually yeah. deal but with it. I, I, I still appreciated, though, what we got after the scene because they were, like, making it work. Like, she didn't feel completely comfortable in town, but, like, they were doing it. And a lot of times you don't get to see them be happy. Like, it's just the end of the book. So you could see them, um, you know, muddling through until their engagement ball. Um, but, yeah, this is a very Hannah book. So if you want to yeah. know my brain of, like, what I love, it's this. And then mm-hmm. also, A Rogue's Rules for Seduction. <laughs> on the opposite end of the spectrum. And on that note, <laughs> I was going to say we could end this and do that. It is 10.58 p.m. on a I Sunday know. night. That is true. Also, the audiobook of A Wicked Game is calling my name, Hannah. That is, but again, Morgan Davis. <laughs> yeah, but she her voice doesn't bother me as much in these. Interesting. There was it was particularly Poppy's lower class accent that I found a little huh. bit more. It's in, she narrated um, Yuletide Christmas or something like that. It was um the Christmas anthology, the historical anthology that was like uh, a bunch of different people all get stuck at an inn. Mm, um, and mm-hmm. it's three different stories that are all taking place simultaneously. Mm-hmm. She narrated that one, and the one of the stories is a romance between. Um, actually, you would probably enjoy it. It's not quite amnesia, but he's like unconscious and sick. He's fallen off a horse, mm. and they bring him in, Help, and, are, and are like, "Who is this guy?" Up. And he's like, kind of keeping his identity a secret. Mm-hmm. Um, and the woman who runs the inn. So she's kind of lower class, and I didn't realize she was going to get one of the stories, like, that she was going to have a oh, romance, yeah. because Beverly Crick does the same voice for her that she does for Poppy, and I was I thought she was, like, uh, an old woman who ran 
the inn. I, I haven't had an issue with I didn't have an issue with a reckless match. I haven't noticed a problem with this. That's one. so funny. I mean, I still um, don't like love it. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me. I think especially because those Welsh dudes. <laughs> there's a Christmas anthology with Tessa Dare and Sarah McLean and Joanna Shoup where Justine Aaron narrates. And I don't know what was going through her brain, but she gave a hero a Scottish accent for a chapter and then just dropped off because he's not Scottish. Um, but multiple people noted it, and I was like, "What did? She, why did she do that?" Uh, it's like, um, Speaking what's her name, weird. Mary Jane Wells, doing a mm-hmm. weird ass Boston or what was it, Irish accent for Matthew Swift? Oh yeah, for Matthew Swift, that was weird. <laughs> like what? What's it with these Christmas novellas? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they just don't care. I will say, audiobook also thing that I noticed. I'll have to go back and look at the actual text. For the most of this book, every time Poppy would say zounds or zoons. That sounded weird in the audiobook. She, she'd say it twice. She would go zoons, yeah. zounds. And in my head, I was like, was this one of those situations where she recorded it both ways because she wasn't sure which pronunciation they'd prefer and then nobody edited one out? I guess. Or maybe. Let me. I can check the book in a second. I will say that did stick out to me in the audiobook. I was like, what is happening? Because I forgot that they existed in the text. No, version. it's only once in the book. Really? What? So they like left it in. What do you mean? So they, they like. So like this says his trousers were plastered to thick thighs and his bare feet were nearly the size of oar blades. Zunes. He must have stumbled out of the surf. Blah blah blah. But if you're listening to the audiobook, it'll say his trousers were plastered to thick thighs and his bare feet were nearly the size of oar blades. Zunes. Zounds. He must so have she, stumbled so out. Like she twice? says it twice. I I I swear it has to be that she was saying it both ways because she didn't know which pronunciation they, they left prefer, it in. And they left it. Because the very last time it that happens a few times. And the very last time she only says it one way. She says it I think she says zooms. Really? Look at But you. I noted it because I was like, oh. Oh yeah, I see here. So Zounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll be able to pick up when like um when the they have to like edit in a sentence, like I'm assuming. Yeah, you, you there's a when that slightly happens. different. Yeah, mm-hmm. that it happens like in a lot of audiobooks. The quality is like, a little odd. Yeah, so like you you can tell, and sometimes it's like a word or like a sentence. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's hilarious. I, I'm no, looking, that one yeah. took me out. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it was. It's one of those things where like it works in um. It's like a Scooby Dooism, but like it works like in the Scooby Dooism, <laughs> but like um Zoinkies. Uh, Zoinks. Jinkies. I just Zoinks. combined them. I made my own Scooby and Jinkies. <laughs> Too late uh, for creating new words. Um, yeah, that's a great catch. Go you on that one. Well, um, when Zunes is a weird word to me because I never know well, which way you're supposed to say it. I've never heard it before. <laughs> oh, it's. I think it's British. So it makes sense that I know it because, boy, do we consume a lot of British media in this household. Yeah. That's – I didn't pick up, like, the law. Like, a lot – like, some books, mm-hmm. like, some authors really love, like, the law. Mm-hmm. Um, so that confused me a little bit. Um, That's an odd one. There's some other ones that I, mm-hmm. I can't think of off the top of my head. You know, sure. in India Holton's, um, the – the scientist inventor guy in book three Mm -hmm. he says what at the end of a lot of sentences yeah and i was like oh that guy um (laughs) what a guy (laughs) what (laughs) (laughs) yeah i can't wait for the audiobook of that um it's one of those like in it situations where mm -hmm. you're like why are you and he just keeps doing it the sabrina carpenter uh bbc controversy do you know what i'm like the singer yeah, she has this song nonsense that I love. I think uh-huh. this song is so fun. Um, but there's a lot of like ad libbed funny versions of the like chorus, uh, uh-huh. and she did this. Th- every time she performs it live, she ad libs some ridiculous version of the ending, which she kind of regrets because now she has to keep one upping herself, and she's like, "This is really difficult." Um, but she performed it I don't know, somewhere in England. I don't know all the details, but like the BBC streamed it or whatever and the <laughs> the ad lib <laughs> version of the chorus she said i don't remember exactly what it was but it was something along the lines of like i'm american bbc means something different where i'm from 
and I'm oh. not going to say what it means. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but whatever the, like, end of the rhyme was, she did something, something in it, and then was like, huh, get it, in it, um, which made me laugh. I was like, that is a hilarious ad lib. I'll, like, we'll link it. There's, like, a TikTok that explains mm-hmm. it. I was like, that's hilarious. But apparently, British people were deeply offended, and oh, really? the BBC, like, took it down and only posted the version without that, like, last little bit. Because, because she said, they were mad. No, no, no. It was about the BBC. Part. Oh, I see. It just <laughs> reminded me because <laughs> the rhyme part was like, huh, in it. Um, uh-huh. I was like, I won't lie. That's hilarious. Good for her. Um, oh, that's good for her. Also not related to this book. Um, it doesn't have to be. It's romance or TBR. That's true. Like 50% of what we do on these standard episodes is nonsense anyway. Nonsense. Yeah. This is the name of the song. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, it. I already forgot. I was like, I, she's doing something. Yeah, I know. I, it's the song we were talking about. It's a there fun song. It's one of those things that, like, I find very satisfying because the, the whole premise of the book is that, like, she's so in love with this guy. Like, he's got her thinking nonsense. Mm. Um, So, like, part of the chorus, she says, like, something about her tongue goes numb, sounds like blah, 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 and, like, does that <laughs> repeatedly, which makes me laugh. But also, there's, like, a an it, – it's one of those things that, like, is very satisfying to me musically, where in the chorus, she says, it feels so good, I have to jump the octave, and she jumps an octave when she sings it, and that it brings That does sound like me, a very you song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, like, musical things that I'm like, ooh, that's so clever and fun. <laughs> also, it's just a fun song, but, like – yeah. It brought me joy. I'm happy for you. Thank you. You deserve joy. Well, for so you, you. So maybe you a, should oh, you. reread One Duke Down. I was going to say, for you, it's an octave key change. For me, it's Andrew Keane. It's Keen. One Duke Down. Yeah. It's Andrew Keane. <laughs> it's um, sex on a beach. It's but not sex the on a beach. Kind. Weird but fucking beautiful. See what I did there? That, I will, I will not lie. Snow on the beach has yeah. been stuck on my head this Snow entire time. Snow on a beach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't even uh, really like one. that song, but me boy, neither. Does it get I stuck in my head because like "Song on the Beach" like isn't a bad song. Like I don't dislike it. Like I just I don't want to listen to it though. Yeah, like sorry. Um, but I was listening to "Fearless," uh, the Taylor's <laughs> deluxe version. Like that whole second CD. Is Tell just me why I was also banger. listening to that today. No, <gasps> I didn't. Banger love after it, banger. Though. I, I switched. So for, I got through a few songs and then I switched to Reputation. Mm, see, Fearless is one of my favorite. Um, I can just sing the shit out of it in my car. I was having a good time yesterday doing errands. It's fair. Okay. Well, we have succeeded in talking too much. As always. As always. So, um, we'll leave you with... With our Taylor Swift thoughts, apparently. With our Taylor Swift thoughts, yep. You can go listen to that whole Midnight's episode. It's like two hours long. Yeah. Because we couldn't... We th- there wasn't a there wasn't a way to make that one short. There was concise. Never heard of it. No, rip. No, it was a fun episode though. It was, and it talked. We got to talk about some books that we don't talk about a lot. So, it's and true. you just yeah. talked about a lot of Sarah McLean that I had no clue about. So that was a very um, fascinating one for me. There you go. Um, signing off and going to sleep. <laughs> She's on like the space station signing off it was a two finger salute (laughs) that's a standard sign off for not space stations (laughs) i don't know why it made me think of like people on space stations (laughs) i don't know what they do i don't plan on ever going to space Uh, space terrifies me but oceans scare me more i am Um, the same way i like i'm fascinated by space but it's Mm -hmm. also very very scary yeah I like stars, oceans- but I, w- I don't want to yeah. go, but I don't even want to learn about the ocean. I don't no. want to know. No. Because it's We don't like belong on our there. Planet. No. No, no, no. We know more about space than we do about our own ocean. And that's horrifying. Yeah. I don't want to know what's down there. I don't think anybody needs to, frankly. Mm-mm. Like, people going down, like, search of the Titanic? Like, no. that, to me, is a horrifying job. We just don't and need to be in the ocean at all. No. Um, Under the Sea is meant to be dun, sung dun, dun. by a little crab and yep. not anything that we do. So, Facts. We Disney brought it again. full circle back to Disney. 
<laughs> we're so talented. Oh, if there's one thing we can do, it's banter our way in circles. <laughs> That's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> to whoever, we had like a like a five-star rating on Spotify, but I'm sure it's because it was like, I don't know, like 10 ratings or something, right? So it's like us and then like a few friends, right? I'm not like, go rate us because... We are a nonsensical podcast for a very mm-hmm. specific niche group of people, but who, someone rated us lower because we dropped to 4.9, 4.9. which <laughs> makes me laugh just because, like, I want to know, I want to, like, I want to know who it was, or like, not like who, but like, what was the thing that they were like, ugh, let me go leave a lower rating. I'm not, I'm not like mad about it. That sounds very petty. I don't care. I just think it's absolutely hysterical. Who was listening to this? Like y'all, we right out the gate show you who we are, and it's uh, it's nonsense from the get go. I just want to know what we did Wait. that made someone like annoyed enough to be like, "Let me go leave them a rating." I'm honestly surprised anyone's given us a rating. Wait, I got it. I got it. Um, what do you got? I don't think I can leave it in there. But for those at home, pause. <laughs> Listen to Strangers Like Me by Phil Collins, another <laughs> Disney movie. Um, get to where he says, I wanna know. And then um listen to that for like a second and then hit this again. <laughs> and then that's the experience. <laughs> Cause we do want to oh, know. Are you are you back from hearing the song? Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. That's what I needed to do when we listened to our uh, Dick Down in Dallas. Um, because I had to edit it out. Because you listen to the entire song. Um, my favorite thing was I took a little bit of you singing. Uh, you're <laughs> Dick Down in Dallas. Down in Dallas. Because <laughs> I could like isolate your sound and like add it to the end. I was like, oh, this is fun. Oh, I didn't. Um, I didn't listen all the way through to the yeah, end. Yeah. So there's like no. a section where I'm like talking <laughs> and like you just in the background are going Dick Down, Dick Down in Dallas. Um, and it brought me great joy. Honestly, that's so on brand. <laughs> so, um, we have to start doing musical interludes where we uh, uh, tell I the audience what to do. I sing too much on this yes. podcast. Um, Not enough in my book. I do like so. the instructions of pause, <laughs> yes. go listen to this thing and come back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. Uh, Welcome <laughs> like, back. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that musical interlude mm-hmm. as much as we did. Yeah. So oh, with Jesus. that... Yeah, on that note. We truly have wait. come full circle. Oh, no. Oh, on that note. <laughs> I feel like I've done that bit on you did. this podcast before. I okay, think good. you did. You did, and I was like, I'm so impressed that you knew that note. And you were like, it's not a specific note. It's just yeah, a I note. Just sang. <laughs> that was just one of the recent ones. So, again, listener, if you know. You're we better need a than us. Romance your TBR bingo card every time Caroline makes the law on that note joke. <laughs> there, yeah. Uh, good for us. Making the free space thing. is just us saying that we're going to not talk for a super long time and then talking for a long time. Sick burn. Oof. It's not really a sick burn. It was like the lowest hanging fruit available. <laughs> It was of the fruits, the hairy sack of prunes. No, it's like a a a bag of prunes with hairs on it. It's a uh, uh, the, we need to factor in Maiden Lane into our schedule. We need to factor in. Yes, we do. Because oh. we're almost we're we're near done with uh, the Hathaways. Um, next week is um, Married by Morning. Um, can't wait for that one, and then the Love in the Afternoon, and then we're done. It'll be a couple weeks after yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, we would love to do a Maiden Lane read along in the near future. So get ready mm-hmm. for that because it's going to be the wildest balls to the ride. wall. Harry Sacks prunes, and prunes to the wall. Prunes to the dunes. I don't know. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> you added sand to the already horrible <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> Just for a little texture. Yeah. 
if the Harry wasn't enough, don't worry, it's now Sandy. <laughs> now it's Sandy. Um, oh, okay, the end. Goodbye. That's all you get from us. <laughs>